Good afternoon. This is Kyle Welch with RCR Wireless News. Thank you for attending Investigative Analytics for Customer Experience Management, presented by Infobright. Our presenter today is Paul Desjardins, Vice President, Business Development at Infobright. Uh, just a reminder to all of the attendees, within 24 hours of this webinar, we will provide you with a link to the on-demand version of today's webinar for your reference. During the webinar, we encourage you to submit questions via the question drop-down box on the control panel, which we will then answer at the end of the presentation. At this time, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Paul. Thank you very much, Kyle. Well, hello, and thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I've been working with CEM providers during my six years here at Infobright. And just a brief note, uh, throughout the presentation today, I will refer to CEM and customer experience management interchangeably. Now, the, uh, the description for the presentation stated that mobile carriers must maintain their networks and offer more products to retain customers. And according to a new report from Accenture, this will require deep insight into subscriber behavior, new forms of collaboration within the industry, and new capabilities within the organization, and an ability to constantly innovate to keep pace with today's demanding consumers. This RCR Wireless webinar explores the role of data analytics solutions within the mobile network enterprise to unlock critical information about subscriber behavior, network operations, and more to enable a more effective measurement of customer engagement. So my proposition to you today is that CEM challenges extend across the organization. That understanding what to measure and where to focus your energy is the key. And that one of the key challenges that you'll need to overcome is the difficulty in performing ad hoc analytics against large volumes of data. And what this really means is you will require the ability to do investigative analytics. I'm going to start by reviewing uh, machine-generated data and its impact on CEM and why uh, customer experience management is so critical today. I'll then move on to the critical role of investi that investigative analytics plays and contrast this you know, with operational analytics and think grids and graphs and predictive analytics. And then I'm going to cover two CEM case studies, one from North America, JDSU, and another one from Europe, Polystar. And then we'll wrap up with a few words about Infobright. And I expect this to take 35 to 40 minutes and so uh, we should have 20 minutes or so if there are any questions. So uh, customer experience management. To start, let me provide some context about machine generated data, which at Infobright is what we call the, the call data records, the CDRs, the transactional data records, the, uh, the events, the logs, IP router logs, and that is the data that is spawned by telephony events. And there are two big trends that I'm sure you know more about than me, uh, but that are critical to this discussion. And the first is the internet of people, or more accurately now, the mobile people. You know, people are glued to their mobile devices. Uh, the internet usage on mobile has eclipsed fixed line for, for a while now. Uh, for consumers, self-service is expected. Immediate access to information is taken for granted. I mean, how many of you have been in a social setting and somebody asks a question about an actor or an actress in a recent movie or the time a restaurant closes, only to see someone in the group already researching the answer on their phone? It happens all the time. Online check-in, ticketless travel, find the closest Starbucks. Our appetite for instant information seems limitless. And the amount of machine-generated data spawned by these is tremendous. So the particular challenge for the telco industry, uh, compared to other CEM market verticals, is how to analyze it given its volume and complexity. So the, the second and equally important uh, thing to, to, to people data is what Cisco calls the Internet of Things. McKinsey has commented that more objects are becoming embedded with sensors and gaining the ability to communicate. The resulting information networks promise to create new business models, improve business processes, and reduce costs and risks. 
know, back in 2010, there were over 12 and a half billion connected devices. So today, operators are forced to deal with complex hybrid networks generating enormous volumes of data. And the question is, will it get easier? Well, hardly. Ericsson's research suggests there will be 50 billion connected devices by 2020 in what they call the network society. It's a combination of smart grids, smart cities, mobile health, smart reading, metering, the appetite is endless. Just a quick sidebar, we, we have a customer that uh, does smart water sprinkling. Uh, what they do is they plant uh, meter devices uh, in, in farmer's fields and they control with the same amount of water by being able to turn the sprinkler heads on and off. They're able to use the same amount of water to get a more efficient, effective use of it and increase crop yields 20%. So the explosion of machine generated data is just at its infancy. It's at our doorstep. So um, although we are just at the beginning of this explosion, it is and will continue driving complexity for customer experience management solutions. So let's get to CEM. Uh, customer experience is, is really the sum of all experiences the customer has with a supplier of goods and services over the duration of their relationship with that supplier. And this can include awareness, discovery, uh, attraction, interaction, purchase, use, cultivation, and advocacy. It, it can also be used to mean an individual experience over just one transaction. Now, Bernd Schmidt, who's a professor at Columbia University, well known for his research and consulting on customer experience, says the term customer experience management represents the discipline, methodology, and our process used to comprehensively manage a customer's cross-channel exposure, interaction, and transaction with a company, product, brand, or service. So a company's ability to deliver an experience that sets it apart in the eyes of its customers serves to increase the amount of consumer spending with the company and optimally inspire loyalty to its brand. So why is managing the customer experience so important to telco service providers today? Well, as I'm sure everybody in this uh, phone call today will, will be able to articulate, operators face many challenges. Revenues are scarce and competition is fierce. And it's more crucial than ever that operators find new ways to provide an excellent level of service to their customers. I mean, think of what's going on. More devices are added every day to a market that desires ever increasing capabilities. It's still hard to believe that people lined up last week for the, for the new iPhone. And except in developing regions, revenue growth, subscriber growth is really not seen to any significant level. But in this, in this uh, really limited growth, we have customer expectations continue to rise. And churn rates certainly reflect that consumers' unwillingness to accept service levels or market offerings that they would have previously. It is clear that operators cannot have a best-in-class customer experience without having an all-round view of their customers, something much more than measuring network performance. Being able to deliver a seamless customer experience is in, uh, in an increasingly integrated multi-channel world has become the top priority for operators. But what does this mean? What to measure? What to focus on? To give customers the experience that will keep them coming back is what it's all about. And it means having the capability to action the events and processes that impact their end users. It means being able to do quality of service, you know, the real-time monitoring of network and services, but far beyond that, SLA monitoring, customer care resolution, product management, marketing research, roaming analytics, you know, real-time monitoring of inbound and outbound roaming traffic. But what's required for success in a, in a customer experience strategy? Well, certainly enhancing the customer experience across your contact centers and other organizational touch points is important, as well as increasing cross-functional collaboration and overcoming silo mentality in your organization, and certainly differentiating yourself in a saturated market and driving brand recognition and loyalty. And a critical success factor to enable all of this is to be able to leverage the big data that you have to provide actionable insights that radically enhance the customer experience. Because at the end of the day, 
you need to run your business. So you have a lot of data, and how do you use it? Well, the same data that indicates where problems occur in a network can inform you about sea changes in application usage by subscribers, which can then lead you to capacity planning initiatives, which can drive down OPEX, which can then potentially lead to alternative price plans, which could then start the whole analytic process all over again. So how does CEM differ from traditional network and service management techniques? It moves beyond measuring and monitoring key performance to provide insights into customer expectations, experience, and usage. So the question is, well, why are market share and average revenue per user impacted? Well, as you'll see a little later, determining the links between service quality measurements and customer behavior is critical, determining the root cause of churn, identifying the set of customers affected by service quality issues, you know, potentially assigning a metric that represents their risk of churn, you know, monitoring quality of service by customer segment, by service, by cell, by region and such, analyzing traffic as it relates to the customer's perception and diagnosing service and call failures in detail for corrective action. So let's move on then to investigative analytics. I've talked about the growing challenges within the telecom and mobile industries, you know, the exploding level of machine generated data and the increasing need and complexity of uh, CEM driven by the data volumes. So with investigative analytics, operators leverage their data assets, transforming the log files, the CDRs, et cetera, into rich customer operational insight that can be leveraged by all parts of the organization. A long time ago, and it was a long time ago, in my first job at a university, it was drilled into me that you can't manage what you can't measure. But we've come a long way. Reports, KPIs, executive dashboards, you know, the operational analytics that we, that we once treasured are now commonplace, and they provide a lot of information, and they're well understood. You know, network availability, average length of call, monthly churn, call failure, top users, etc. And what CEM applications have moved on to is the investigative analytics, not just what happened, but why. And predictive analytics, what's going to happen. So what if everything is going well in your operation? What, what, how can you use investigative analytics? Well, the most successful operators simultaneously generate new revenue streams while controlling costs, managing the twin levers of efficiency and effectiveness, understanding their user experience. You know, why are the upsell or cross-sell opportunities working in a given city or region? You know, what are the shared characteristics of higher margin users who we should then market to? You know, did a certain application's download increase more based on outbound marketing or social media? What is it about the demographic or psychographic attributes that make location-based services in a specific mobile environment so successful? And what if the network is running smoothly? Will it always? What if understanding traffic patterns by time of day, by application, allows existing capacity to be better understood? And the potential, what if changing antenna position by time of day provided extra capacity management by time slice? Well, what if this excess capacity could be documented and planned in simulations to be used in the future to avoid future bottlenecks? And the associated hardware investment could be deferred or even eliminated. This is all possible with investigative analytics, and it's all being done today. So you have an operational analytics capability uh, in, in this example where something didn't go right, where something went wrong. And that indicates a specific area is experiencing higher levels of, uh, of, of drop calls than a given threshold in a mobile network uh, allows. So now what? You know, for example, you know, we could pick any city, but I'll, you know, we'll pick Miami. What happens if the call drop rate goes up in a specific part of Miami at 3 p.m. on a Monday afternoon? Well, what might you want to know? Well, how does this compare to the drop rate at that time over the past week? 
you know, how does this compare to the drop rate for the past year on Mondays at 3 p.m.? And what was the makeup of phones being used? Uh, you know, iPhones, Galaxies, even Blackberries, and how has this been trending? What were the applications being used at the time? And what were the applications being used on the different phones, the YouTube, the video streaming, was there a sports broadcast, Skype, Facebook, Twitter, etc.? The challenge is, is that to understand what's going on, it takes an awful lot of insight and it takes an awful lot of data and access to that data. So the challenge is that if you don't, do not know in advance the type of question you're going to ask, then, then how do you get at it? Well, the, the big challenge is you don't know. The next question you ask in, in diagnosing situations is often informed by the result that you saw from your previous question. It's an iterative ad hoc process. The challenge though is it's done against billions of rows of data with potentially hundreds of attributes. And so a, a, as people find in, in the industry, you can't possibly know in advance all the questions that you might be asked. And this is a challenge that I mentioned at the beginning that you'll need to overcome, performing ad hoc analytics against large volumes of data. For mobile network operators, the sheer number of variables precludes being able to plan in advance all the queries you may need to. And consequently, the performance of traditional database technologies are limited to the indexing and partitioning that they were implemented with. Or even worse, a new request turns into an IP project. So how do you make this real? How do you practically deliver investigative analytics? So over the next couple of slides, I'm going to talk about what's critical to this and what, you know, what, what needs to happen. The first thing, obviously, is that you're facing a mountain of data. Everybody sees this worldwide. And so compression is critical. The thing you think of, of course, is, is how does it reduce total cost of ownership by reducing the need for storage and hardware? And this is, of course, an option. But what I really want you to think about, though, is how it can also enable better analytics. What if on the same hardware footprint you already have deployed, you could move from holding just a month of data to two years' worth of data? Expanding the time frame allows operators the ability to compare situations and frame their insights with more clarity. Load speeds. This is the Achilles heel of the database world. How do I keep up with the volume of data being generated and yet be prepared to react on an ad hoc basis to the queries necessary to drive insight? It's all about keeping up and it's absolutely a necessity. The, the mobile world is all about frictionless. Uh, you just think about the frictionless payment inherent now in all of our phones. Well, the database that supports your CEM needs to be able to provide frictionless inquiry. So let me ask a question about the network event in Miami at 3 p.m. last Monday and then compare the Monday event in similar sized cities in the region, and then dive into the characteristics of the users in those different cities. And oh, by the way, let me do all that without calling the IT department to engage a DBA. Uh, today, you need frictionless inquiry. What, uh, what, what you know, when, when the people on the front line have an aha moment, it's often said that they'd rather reach for a keyboard and, and not reach for a DBA. So if your CEM solution requires a, a, a database amount of effort to answer a question, you've got the wrong solution. And more than that, you're imposing cost on yourself and your customer. So. In addition to ad hoc performance, load speed, compression, and low touch, uh, for a practical investigative analytic solution, it also has to be scalable, highly available, and affordability. Uh, it, it can't be so expensive that it, it precludes use. So what, what this means, though, is that the historically uh, general purpose databases, the traditional databases, 
that have been used are not suitable for the investigative analytics that are required for telco CEM solutions. So let's have a look at what JDSU and Polystar have been doing. Uh, JDSU is, is a well-known OSS provider to Tier 1 operators around the world. Um, there's a YouTube video by Chuck Gruber, who's the principal architect at JDSU, uh, for a service, uh, assurance solution they call Session Trace. And in the YouTube video, Chuck explains the dynamics that they faced when they were looking for the capabilities that their customers were demanding. Uh, you know, it, it's widely used, lots of users, and, and they were having some cost issues. Uh, the application session trace is an easy to use, powerful network and service troubleshooting tool and use for issue resolution. It supports a broad set of network protocols, including the latest de next generation 4G LTE networks and call data streams in at a high speed. The application uh, provides near real-time and historical analysis of each subscriber's interaction with GPRS, UMTS, or LTE networks. But what's really cool is it provides a pictorial sequence diagram of a subscriber's sessions and lets the user perform detailed analysis of signaling procedures. And so historically, troubleshooting had been a niche area occupied by only a handful of highly skilled network experts uh, you know, in the operator. But this application, Session Trace, simplifies the network and service information and, and lets less skilled Tier 2 users effectively diagnose problems while letting scarce and expensive Tier 3 resources focus on more complex issues. So imagine that uh, Session Trace significantly improves operational efficiency in the fault management lifecycle and reduces the average time to diagnose problems from 45 minutes to 5 minutes. Now, if you watch Chuck's uh, online video, he talks about the specific requirements that JDSU had when they set out to improve the analytic capability of the Session Trace application. Uh, very specifically, they wanted to support very fast load speeds. Uh, they wanted to reduce the amount of storage by 5x, uh, reduce the capex, uh, and they wanted to reduce overall license cost and, and eliminate the, the customer DBA tax. Now, JDSU's customers liked the application. They really enjoyed Session Trace, but they found that they themselves were being forced to pay more and more attention to the database, you know, the indexing and partitioning that goes along with these traditional databases. And Chuck, in, in the YouTube video, refers to the army of DBAs that were required to constantly tune and monitor the previous database. Particularly problematic, given that some of these databases were remotely installed in uh, switch sites. So the DBA tax was significant. And then, of course, he wanted to continue delivering the fast query uh, performance with no tuning for 200 simultaneous users for ad hoc queries. So not, not a small task. task. But the end of the story uh, is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, they're loading 2,000, 20,000, sorry, CDRs per second and 40,000 transactions per second. Their retention increased from a week to 30 days. They were able to decrease storage by 5x. And probably most significantly, they were able to eliminate the DBA tax, the tuning and indexing that had been imposed on their operators. I'd like to talk for a few minutes about Polystar, who are based in Stockholm. They do business around the world, uh, over 100 customers in 50 countries and very well known and well respected. Uh, Polystar uh, has a solution called Jupiter, and the application captures data which is used by both operations and marketing areas. It's able to deliver the KPIs required by the operations group, as well as allowing them to drill down instantly uh, to the individual subscriber level, as well as provide the business insights that only exploiting big data can bring. Eric Couture, who's the Executive Vice President for Global Sales and Marketing at Polystar, recently noted that Jupiter transforms the data and makes it available in real time for telecom operators to slice and dice for business insight 
in order to drive new business, ensure customer satisfaction, and reduce churn. He said the rise of social networking, machine-to-machine -machine services, location-to-based services, and mobile commerce have increased the velocity of volume growth, as well as providing unprecedented levels of detail on network and user behavior. Uh, interesting though, when first introduced, Jupiter was used primarily for network monitoring uh, by network and engineering departments and operations departments. However, today Jupiter is used throughout the organization from, from operations to marketing. The, the CIO of Polystar, Thomas Nielsen, says that it's an exciting time. We are finding ways to make all the information we collect and deliver solutions to network and mobile operators so they can quickly and easily slice and dice the data and gain better insight into their subscriber-based behavior. So this is happening today. Uh, what drove Polystar to look around, their challenge was about keeping up with data growth that their operators were experiencing. Uh, their challenge came when their load rates were approaching a billion rows a minute. And what, what the problem that they saw was not only were there delays in loading the data, but some of their analytic queries returned no results at all. So the end of the story is is, is, uh, is quite nice. The end of the story is that, that the transaction data records are now written four times faster than previously. Uh, they're getting 10 to 1 compression, and that's allowed them to meet the request of some operators who want to keep the detailed data for up to 180 days something they could never contemplate previously. Now uh, a little word from our sponsor, a little word from Infobright. Um, Infobright is a, is a business solutions company built around a core technology set. And we deploy these solutions in different ways depending on what the best fit is for the customer needs and use cases. And we excel at investigative analytics. Uh, this is where use, you know, users are asked questions about the data, you know, trends and aggregates. Um, when, when you look at the technology, the reason Infobright is widely deployed by CEM providers is that the core technology uh, differs from anything else in the market provide, uh, place, and it provides competitive advantage if you are dealing with machine-generated data. So we, we don't say we're a silver bullet to fix everything, but we, what we do say is that if you're dealing with machine-generated data, you know, the CDRs, transaction data records, router logs, et cetera, events, uh, that these have attributes that take advantage of our, 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 our architectural design. And that is that they're usually deployed in a denormalized fashion with a limited number of tables, and they're seldom, if ever, updated. And if that's the case, then the, the columnar database approach that we have, the knowledge grid, the iterative engine, uh, provide competitive advantage because you're going to be able to store unprecedented amounts of data on a small footprint and not have to do the tuning and indexing that you do with other technologies. It's all about the technology difference. Um, Essentially, the knowledge grid is a, is a process that's created on load. It's, it's a series of metadata about each individual data pack. And the data pack is simply the interval uh, of compression that we use in a column. So we take a, a table, store it by column, and you know, we have a, a data pack which is you know, on, um, on implementation at 64K, but you can vary the size. And so we, we take that interval of data we, we look at what's inside it, and we store metadata about it. And this is all done on load. And we're, we're talking about being able to create this metadata and keep up with the largest telco networks in the world. And what that means is that the data is essentially available to the, to the network operating center, the help desk, in real time. But it's not just the, the, the recent data, but all the historical data is available and it can be queried in an ad hoc fashion. So a little bit more about Infobright. Uh, we are uh, approaching 500 customers around the world. We're over 16,000 implementations. We're being used by eight of the top 10 global carriers. We excel at machine-generated data. Uh, telecom is just one type. You know, the mobile 
advertising networks were well deployed financial services capital markets. Uh, enough about InfoBright. Uh, just to, to say that we have a number of different solutions. We have an appliance version of our product that, that is used for core enterprise configurations. We have the uh, original InfoBright Enterprise Edition for software-only deployments. We have an embedded version for customer experience management providers. And there, of course, is the Community Edition, which we're well known for. So at the end of the day, we set the bar for query performance, uh, analytics, and, and compression. We're a strong fit for telco data, and it's uh, been a pleasure speaking this afternoon. So Kyle, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Paul. At this time, uh, we are going to take some questions. So I encourage everyone, if you have any questions, please submit them in the question drop down in the control panel. Uh, but we do have a few questions that we've gotten in, Paul. Uh, the first one we have is, what would be the biggest challenge to updating a CEM system for big data? Well, that's, that, that's, that's a mouthful. But uh, <laughs> I think essentially what, 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 what happens and what we've seen time and time again around the world is for, for, the, uh, for the CEM provider to understand what their customers are going through. And, you know, I, I used to, in, in a previous life, talk about sta staple yourself to an order and watch it flow through an organization. This would be staple yourself to an ad hoc query and try and understand what they're trying to do to resolve the queries. And you'll sort of get a deep insight into what has to happen in a more, in, in, in a faster fashion. So really understanding the ad hoc nature of, of what your operators are trying to do would probably be a good start. Okay. Um, another question we have is, does InfoBright provide a CEM system? The answer is no. We are a uh, analytic database company. Uh, we, we excel at, at analytics, but we're not a BI solution. We're, we're not an application, so we're, we can be used, and we are embedded in many, many different uh, CEM solutions. But for, for the most part, the, the, end use, the end customer of the solution doesn't even know we're there. And of course, we can be used with independent BI solutions as well. But the CEM solutions, the, the providers generally have their own front-end application and simply connect to us through, you know, ODBC or JDBC or some scripting language. Okay. Another question is, what exactly does the knowledge grid do that you mentioned in your presentation? Well, we, we could spend a bit of time on the knowledge grid, but uh, it essentially replaces the requirement for for the traditional indexing and partitioning strategies that, that row-based databases require. Um, you know, I, I talked a little bit about it, but you know, it, it, it's, um, it's created at the data pack level, which is you know, an interval within a column. And by having data that describes what's inside it, um, it, it, it allows the, the granular computing engine, which is based on rough set math, to take that and figure out what's the quickest way to solve the query. And so it, it dramatically reduces the I.O., and that's why it's so, so good at ad hoc queries. All right. Another one we had come in is, what do you see as the next steps for investigative analytics? So oh, it's, uh, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And, and uh, uh, what, what we see is, 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 is you know, as we, we touched on it a little bit, but, but you're going to get into predictive analytics. And, and uh, you know this ability of not just what what happened and why, but what what's going to happen, and be able to uh, we see being able to to ex experiment against the big data in in a, in an even faster fashion. You know you're going to see the paradigm change with with the with the demand of uh, all these different types of data that are coming in that are exploding. Uh, being able to sample data and get get more real-time answers, you know, the way you explore big data is very, very different than the way you explore little bits of data. And so we're, we're going to see an increasing speed and in requirements from end customers to explore big data. Okay. Um, so once again, if anyone has any questions, uh, please submit them in the questions panel. Um, we do have a, a one that just came in. Um, how um, how huge is data being, wait, sorry. 
All right, how is huge data being converted to smart data and what are the trends for sampling? Uh, you know, I'm going to save that for a, a webinar that we'll be doing in, in a month and just stay tuned because there's going to be some interesting, uh, there's going to be some interesting news about that, but uh, uh, that, that's a, a terrific question and, and I'm just going to ask you to watch the Infobrite website because we'll we'll have have some news on that uh, that I, I can't share right now, but probably within a month. Okay, uh, we had another question about the the knowledge grid. Do you actually have to program the knowledge grid? Good question. The answer is no. The answer is it's all automatic. It's done. It, it, it's done by the system. So if, if you the knowledge grid is created, as I said, it's created automatically on load for every data pack. You know, data packs make up a column. So if you had a billion rows in a table, there would be multiple, multiple data packs. And we store that information in a separate file. So we store, you know, we're a column database. We store the column in a file and, you know, column A in one file and column B in the next. And so as the data is loaded, it automatically creates this metadata. And, and if you can imagine being able to keep up to, 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 the, to the largest uh, providers in China, North America, and Europe, then you're creating this data in, in near real time, storing it in the database. And yet when it's there, it's already got the metadata there, the knowledge grid. So you haven't had to do anything which is why you're able to do this this incredible ad hoc query performance in near real time. Okay, um, I think that's about all the questions we have right now. Uh, Paul, did you have any closing comments or summary that you just want to want to give as a takeaway? No, other other than than that, the CEM is 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 probably one of the hottest spaces we see. The customer demands for, for investigative analytics and predictive analytics are growing. And stay tuned because what you see today is going to be accelerating, as is the demands from the end customer driven by the end consumer. And thank you very much for your time today and for joining.